According to the calendar, spring is here, but a lot of nature is still sleeping. What we're going to talk about today is creating wildlife friendly spaces. And I'm here in my backyard to show you how I'm going to prepare for wildlife this summer. What you're going to do is assess your outdoor space for wildlife. We're going to work together to maximize it so that you can help wildlife in your community. There are key things that wildlife needs to survive. Today, we are going to focus on shelter. And because there's so much to go over, I have so many ideas for how you can maximize your space for wildlife. There's probably gonna be a bunch of spin-off videos. I am so excited. And you might be thinking, I don't have a big yard like you do. That's totally okay. You just need a little bit of outdoor space. You can even work with containers because even though when we think about wildlife, we conjure up images of elephants, deer, wolves, these large species, but wildlife constitutes insects, birds, even plants and fungi. So no matter where you are in the world, no matter how big your space is, you can make it better for wildlife. We're gonna use the criteria set by the National Wildlife Federation. In fact, I just applied to have my yard certified and it was approved, so I am getting my sign soon. The most important thing that you can do, if you only take one thing away from this video, is plant native plants. Native plants are the foundation for any wildlife habitat native plants provide so much food, shelter, and places to raise young. In previous videos, I talked about how plants by modern definitions are considered wildlife. But even if you care more about the larger species, remember it all starts with plants. Things like shrubs and thickets, they provide cover. If you have any field, meadow, or prairie type habitat in your yard. This provides a lot of shelter for animals. Mature trees provide places for animals to live. Raccoons and woodpeckers can live within cavities. I'm lucky to have a number of mature trees in my backyard that provide important habitat leave dead trees up as long as they don't harm your house. Woodpeckers love this top area of my tree where it's decaying. Here you can see a woodpecker hole in a dead branch. Leaf litter is so important to so many animals. It provides cover for a lot of species. Amphibians use it to help them stay moist and cool. There are so many species of insects that overwinter in the leaves. Moths, butterflies, bees. Moths and butterflies attach their pupae to the leaves. So if you are throwing out your leaves, putting it at the curb, you are throwing out next year's insects. And next year's insects are food for wildlife, like the songbirds that most people want to attract to their yard. Leaf litter is so important, and I rake my leaves into beds where lots of plants grow. Native stems provide important habitat for many insect species. And intact plant stems, 12 inches or thicker, can provide overwintering home for insects. I leave logs like these on the ground. About one third of bee species nest in cavities like these. Leaving dead logs can provide important habitat for insects. And can you say hi to Gus? About 70% of bees are ground nesting bees. They lined their nest with native plants too. When we think about bees, so many of us think about the non-native honeybee, but there is a huge diversity of bees critical to pollinating plants. Here in Illinois, we have over 500 species. Whenever I clean up sticks, I put them in brush piles. Here you can see my old Christmas tree. Animals like chipmunks love this. Rock piles or walls can provide homes for animals like chipmunks and even bees. Ponds and water gardens can provide habitat, especially for amphibian species and reptiles. Animal burrows provide habitat for the animal creating the burrow, but it can also provide habitat for other species. Bees can use chipmunk burrows. Although focusing on native plants is best and animals will make homes from the native plants, you can also put up nesting or roosting boxes for birds and bats. This is a nesting box that was already in my yard when I moved in here and it provides 
provides a home for birds. Remove non-native invasive species like this honeysuckle. You can see here, even though I've cut it down, it is persisting and I have to take care of it this year. Those are just some of the things that I'm doing in my yard as a new owner of this home. I'm going to be continuing to improve my yard over the years and I'm excited for you to join me. So what you're going to do now is look at your yard, assess it, and if you currently don't have shelter, think about things that you can do to improve your yard for wildlife. Join the Wildlife for Biology Kids Club and use my downloadable worksheets. It'll give you specific tips and activities that you can do to enhance your yard no matter where you live in the world. For more tips as well as species identifications, check out how to attract wildlife to your garden, where I am a contributing editor. This video is part of my Wildlife Biology for Kids Club program. You will get the accompanying downloadable activities, take them into your backyard, into your neighborhood, and use them to explore nature together. You'll also get access to a community of like-minded individuals to share your findings and get inspired by what others discover. Interact with me and there will be exclusive content. Check out the description below for the enrollment link. You can enroll at any time. These activities are meant to be fun, easy, and intentional to get you and your child outside discovering nature, fostering their curiosity, and connecting together. Make sure you subscribe so that you get the notification when the next video is out.